Hello everybody, we did a big chunk of the gas tank in the last video. Now let's switch gears a bit and focus on some smaller bits like the gas tank lid. You know the drill by now, control click on the canvas to mask our gas tank. Now let's pop the gizmo and from the gear pick cylinder 3D. Set the H device to 32 and keep scaling it up until it fills the hole. We'll also need to scale it down on the Z axis. Once that's done, split it off to a new subtool and press QC50. Now let's clone the subtool so we can work in a cleaner scene. Turn off dynamic and let's inset the flat island. Once done, click to repeat on the back. Next up, we're going to Q mesh the polygroup island. Press QC50 and adjust the crease level to 3. We'll add in 3 edge loops using insert multiple edge loops. And again, let's click just to repeat that on the back. Slide the outer edge loops upwards a bit on both sides. Now we'll delete the middle edge loop. But not to worry, we'll insert it back in so we can be sure it's in the center. We're going to split the point now, tapping Alt to change the polygroup, then repeat the same operation and sizing until we have a total of 5 holes. Then do the same thing on the back with the same polygroup. Then go ahead and choose Inset Polygroup All. Make sure to tap Alt to change up the polygroup, then select Q Mesh Polygroup All. Hold down Shift to switch to a move operation, and then Q mesh it all the way through. Next, we want to pick Inset Poly Loop. And then Q mesh Poly Group Island. Go ahead and delete the edge loop to create the bevel. Press Uncrease All, then click on Crease PG. Let's continue with Q meshing the polygroup island and then control drag to separate the geo. Then Q mesh it all the way in. Hold Shift while you're Q meshing, which will allow you to switch to a move operation. Next, let's select the center model and split hidden. Control Shift click on the top polygroup, which will also select the bottom one as well. To assign two different polygroups, just click on Auto Groups. It's time to turn off Dynamic again. Let's use the 32 sides IMM and drag it out. Control drag to unmask, then control drag again to perform a mesh fusion. Let's do the same process for the back of the cylinder. Bring up the Z-Model brush and delete the extra edge loops. Now we can press Ctrl W to group visible. Now let's go for the slide option for the point action and select brush size as the target. To work a bit faster, turn on symmetry in both the X and Z axis. Let's select Inset for the Polygon Action, Flat Island for the Target, and Standard for the Modifier. Next we're going to select QMesh a single poly and Alt Tag those middle polys. If necessary, you can make some edge adjustments. Press QC50 and slide those top two edges down slightly. Let's go for a line for the edge action, edge strip and straight lines for the target, setting the specified curvature to zero for the modifiers. Alt tag those bottom 8 polys and add an edge loop so QMesh has something to snap to. 
Let's collapse the back four edges. Alt tag the eight faces with transpose a single poly selected. This will help to correct the angle of the faces. Clear the mask and align the extruded faces with the Z modeler brush. Now we can press Ctrl W to group visible. Let's go ahead and press QC50 and if needed, use the gizmo to reposition the model. With transpose flat island selected, unmask it. Mask out half and use the gizmo to adjust the angle. Next we'll use transpose edge loop partial to move that bottom edge loop out. Clear the mask and set our crease level down to 2. Now press Ctrl W to group visible. Control click on the canvas to mask our model and bring up the gizmo. From its gear, we're going to select polycube. Control click on the canvas again, but this time to invert the mask. Then split unmask points. Delete all the faces on the cube except for the top. Let's scale the plane down a bit, then extrude the top edges. We can click to repeat that operation on the bottom. Go ahead and delete the side edge loops. Now you want to select Slice Mesh for the edges and point. And turn on Symmetry for the Z axis. Now we can select Slide for the point action. Next up, Q-Mesh all the polygons and then press Flip. Press QC50 and set up your creases. Let's unmask half of the middle edge loop and give it a little upwards rotation with the gizmo. We're going to use a line with the Z-Modeler brush to clean up those side edges. Give it a light polish by features to correct any surface errors. Let's use Q-Mesh Poly Loop to clean up the pinching from the poles and crease those corners. Unmask the bottom and dial down the thickness a bit. Time to move it down into place with the gizmo and do some final touch up with the Move Infinite Depth Brush. Let's go ahead and grab the Clip Curve Brush to flatten the top. Bring up the gizmo and from its gear, choose Polyplane. Let's mask out the points and move the plane using the gizmo. Next we're going to select insert multiple edge loops and then use the Z modeler to move the points into place.
Now we're going to add in one edge loop for each face. Then extrude those edges and position them using the move point action. Now add in an edge loop and extrude the back edges. Grab the 10 sides IMM. Bring up the gizmo to scale and position it into place. Let's extrude out the edges and weld them to the other mesh. Go ahead and press Ctrl W to group visible. Now Q-mesh all the polygons, then press flip. Unmask the top edges and move them in with the gizmo. Then we can clear the mask and center the gizmo. For the gear, select Deformer Saw. We are trying to get the top profile and also any changes from the Deformer. The Deformer is a pretty powerful tool for hard surface modeling. Let's make sure you hit Accept to lock in your changes. A neat little trick I like to do is moving the mesh to the white border of the viewport to check if everything's straight. Let's return to the gizmo and grab the deformer soft again. For this round, we only want to affect the curvature of the end. Add in an edge loop and slide it in. Alt tag those six faces and select Q mesh a single poly. Let's hold down shift to switch it to a move operation. Then we can Q-mesh the polygroup island. We're done with the back polygroup, so let's delete it. Extrude all polygons, then press flip. Press QC50 and do some crease adjustments. Dial the crease level up to 3. Then select Slide Edge Loop Complete. Let's move some edges to clear up some of that surface deformation. Bring up the gizmo and from the gear, pick polyplane. We're going to mask out all points and move the plane with our gizmo. Let's insert two edge loops and reposition the point.
Now we'll add five edge loops. Unmask those points and move them with the gizmo. Then we can clip it back to nail the shape we're after. Let's throw in a few more edge loops to help us shape that silhouette. Add a couple more edge loops along the length of the model. You must the polygons and then press flip. Let's give the model a little bit more thickness with the gizmo. Now we can select the former soft again and make some more adjustments. Go ahead and press accept to lock it in. Let's snap it to the bottom view and grab the former soft once again, this time to taper it in. Press QC50 and crease that back edge. Switch to the Move Infinite Depth Brush and make some minor adjustments. Back to the Z Modeler Brush. Let's select Split for your point action. Unmask those edges and move them over just a tad. The more even your faces are, the better your split will turn out. Now switch to Inset Polygroup All. Go ahead and tap Alt to change the polygroup color. We want to delete the middle polygroup. Select Bridge for the edge action, two holes and one line for the target, and Polygroup Flat for the modifier. Let's quickly turn on double so we can see the back. We're going to need to select slide edge loop complete to create that bevel. Press QC50 and do some crease adjustments. Let's crank up the crease level to 3 and press Ctrl W to group visible. From the Z Modeler brush, select QMesh Poly Loop. And then click Crease PG. This will create a loop around the mesh, alleviating any pinching from the poles. Now we can take a moment to clean up the creasing. Then slide the edge loop back to create the bevel. I wanted to circle back to our working mesh real quick, just to show where we placed the models we just created. The side reference doesn't really do them justice. So hopefully this will give you a better picture of where they're situated.